But let's begin tonight with senior advisor for the Trump campaign, Mercedes Schlapp. And Mercedes, it's always great to see you. Thank you for joining us. You look at these numbers. In fact, I want to put the Florida numbers back on the board if I can there, kind of showing the dip over the past couple of months. And it's interesting because, you know, we're four months out. Everybody says, look, it's a long way to go four months out. But in the states where COVID is spiking, the numbers are slipping, Mercedes. It has to be a concern for the campaign. Look, when it comes to our internal polling, it shows that whenever we have, whenever we define Biden, the president performs strongly. And I think what is going to, you're going to see more and more is that of talking about and unveiling Joe Biden's record, uh, his record of being a globalist, so his record of not having a plan to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, his record of saying, look, we're going to, he's going to increase taxes and roll back the tax cuts that President Trump uh, put forward. Uh, so, and, and we got to compare this to the response, the aggressive, bold response by President Trump when it comes to the coronavirus pandemic, working with our state and local leaders, working with the private sector, as well as a whole government approach to ensure that the states are getting what they need to combat the virus. So coronavirus mm -hmm. should not ever be a political issue. This is about saving lives and flattening the curve. And that's exactly what President Trump has done. And critics say maybe the president has made it a political issue. And I want to I want to play this soundbite from the former uh, acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, because you said it's about defining Joe Biden. And he kind of he kind of echoed that same sentiment here. Listen to this, Mercedes, and I'll get your response on the other side. So if the president can go back to drawing those contrasts between him and Joe Biden, that becomes a, 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 a race between Trump and Biden. I think the president does extraordinarily well. If it ends up being a popularity contest or worse, a referendum on President Trump, I think he's got some real, some real headwinds to face. Yeah, and what they're saying here, Mercedes, is maybe the president's keeping too much of the focus on himself instead of putting the focus back on Joe Biden. Look, we're all focused at the campaign as, as well as President Trump in, on hitting Joe Biden and his record. The problem is Joe Biden has been a career politician for over 40 years, and I don't think hardly any Americans can talk about his accomplishments. Uh, what we've seen under Joe Biden is the slowest economic recovery in history. What we've seen under President Trump is the strongest economic recovery, where even despite coronavirus having an impact on our economy, we've been able to create 4.8 million jobs just last month. This is something that obviously the Democrats don't want to see and the liberal media don't want to see, which is a successful economy, despite the fact that we're also still combating coronavirus. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about the Pew Research poll and that same poll showing that when it comes to temperament, you know, people say who has the better temperament, you know, Joe Biden leads by some 35 points. And I wonder if that's if that's part of the uh, the tone and the tenor of the president. Does he does he plan to adjust that or is this just, you know, it's just another another polling aspect? Well, I have to say Joe Biden is tone deaf. Uh, we really he, he can't even put a sentence together. He can't really come up with a vision of America. In fact, he's had to embrace the radical left and gain their garner their support and move towards this. I don't like America concept and being ashamed of America, as opposed to the president who delivered a message of hope, a message of opportunity, a patriotic message where most Americans believe that America is a great country, that we have to learn from our past and teach our children about how America is a country of freedom for all. And so I think at the end of the day, look, the president, and I've got, I had the great honor of working with him at the White House. He's a results oriented president. He works with both pres with Democrats and Republicans to get the job done, to renegotiate these trade deals where you have Joe Biden sticking to the status quo approach and supporting trade deals like NAFTA. No, the president, for example, we saw this this week, uh, no. the USMCA going into effect. He's meeting with the Mexican president tomorrow and speaking sure. with Canadian Prime Minister Tr Trudeau. So it's huge progress that's been made under President Trump. And, t and talk to me about the schools opening. The president wants the schools to open. Mercedes, I mean, you know, this is this is near and dear to your heart because you're the mother of five school aged children here. Uh, he's pressuring governors. There's a little bit of pushback. What, what do you think is is going to push this to across the finish line for you? Well, I got to tell you, in the Schlapp household, there's seven votes in favor of reopening up the schools. OK, especially mm -hmm. my vote. Uh, it's a big <laughs> challenge for working families and single parents who have had to try to teach their children, uh, support their children during this difficult time of having the schools closed. We have seen, for example, the American Association of Pediatrics saying, 
We need to get these schools open. They need to have uh, this classroom learning experience. It's vital for the mental health of these children. We've also seen Dr. Fauci come out and say that closing up the schools would have unintended negative consequences. It's very clear that the president, by using his bully pulpit, is able to share a message that I think most parents can agree on, which is let's get these schools open safely. Let's get parents back to work and let's keep our economy growing. And I got about 15 seconds left, Mercedes. You're off tomorrow on a, on a Women for Trump bus tour. Give us 10 seconds on what's that all about. Yes, it's our big pink bus. It's a Women for Bus Trump tour. We'll be visiting Milwaukee and Green Bay. Uh, we'll be meeting with uh, a women across the, the, the state and being able to talk about these critical issues about, for example, school choice, something that Joe Biden does not support. He aligns himself with the teachers unions. The president aligns himself with the parents and the children so they don't end up in failing schools. We're gonna talk about how we wanna ensure that we reopen this economy safely and ensure that we also uh, make sure that the priority is of that of the health of all Americans in dealing with this coronavirus pandemic and, and exposing Joe Biden's weak leadership. He won't. I, I'm happy we're going on this bus tour because he's yep. too much I, being stuck in the basement. <laughs> Mercedes Schlapp, it's great to see you. Thank you.